Hey everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays. It's totally free to subscribe and a great way to help support my channel. I'm super excited to show you guys this tutorial today. It is a really, really super fun one. We're going to do the Spotify artwork that everybody has been doing on TikTok. The way we're going to do it is I'm going to show you how easy it is to just use some shapes from Design Space to do this. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you before we get started is instead of using album art, try to use your own personal picture. Album art is a copyrighted item, and if you're selling, you cannot sell an item with the album art on it. Um, artists have been going after people for it, so just be aware of that. Um, mine is just our wedding photo, but it is really fun to be able to add a little bit of personalization to your song. So it could be really fun to do something with a picture from that moment in time. So let's go ahead over to Design Space so that I can show you guys exactly how to do this. The first thing that you'll want to do is make sure that you are logged into Spotify and you can do this with a free account so you don't need premium. I'm going to use the song that we used for our wedding and that was Today by Brad Paisley. So all I did was just search Today Brad and it brought up Today by Brad Paisley. Hover over this and you'll see that you get the three dots down here. Click on those three dots and click copy song link. You're gonna go to the website spotifycodes.com and right here you're gonna enter your Spotify code. So just hit control V or you can just hit paste. I'm gonna click get Spotify code. You'll see here that it opens up this neat little band, I guess. It's their logo and then the little code for your song. You don't need to change anything as far as like background color or bar color or size or anything like that but you'll need to change it to an SVG. That's gonna make life so much easier when you go to put this into Design Space. Click Download. It is going to ask you where to download it. I'm gonna change the name of it just so that I can find it easier. I'm just gonna call it Spotify Today in case I make other ones with different songs. So once you've done that, it's gonna download. It gives you this weird little doohickey and it downloads. Once it's downloaded, you can go into your Cricut Design Space, which we are gonna let open really quick. And I'm going to show you guys how to upload that. So what you'll do, click new project, upload, upload image, browse, and then we'll find the Spotify today. That's what we called it. So it's right here, Spotify today. Perfect. Done. Click save. Click on the image and insert your image. Because it's an SVG, it's going to load really cool, super easy to work with. So you'll see that you have this black bar. You can totally keep that if you want, but you really don't need it. And you can just cut out this little thing, which is all going to cut in white. So you want to make sure you select this whole thing and attach it. That way it holds everything together and it's going to cut correctly. If you don't attach it, you're going to get a ton of like different spots. And you can absolutely totally get rid of the white box if you don't want it. It's just a personal preference thing but it's not gonna cut it out because we hit it, so don't worry about it. Now what we need to do is add it so that it looks like our Spotify design. So if you go into the app, it's gonna look really different, and I'm gonna bring up one of the Spotify glasses so you can see what it looks like. I'm just gonna look up Spotify glass art just so I can show you an example because you wanna make sure that you get like the play button and the little back buttons and then you can do this little section here. So you can add a bunch of stuff to this to make it exactly how you want. And you can honestly do this by just using Design Space shapes, or you can try to find the SVG for the whole thing. But to save yourself some money and some time, I just like to make them out of Design Space shapes. So I'm just gonna make, this is gonna be our play button. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna get out a triangle. I'm gonna make our triangle smaller. And then I'm gonna hold down shift and turn my triangle so that it turns at a perfect sideways angle. Change the color of your triangle just so you can see it better against your gray circle. And I'm gonna just go ahead and figure out a good size for it. Select both items and I'm gonna go ahead and center them. And I actually don't like it centered, I think it looks weird. So you don't have to center it, but if it's, you know, it's a personal preference thing. So you just figure out where it looks best for you select both and I'm gonna go ahead and just slice it out just to make my life easier and get rid of those. Now what we need are um, a triangle and we need a square. We're gonna take our triangle, size it down 
and I'm gonna rotate it. Again, I didn't hold shift on that one, so I'm gonna undo what I did because if you hold shift, it's gonna move it in more like straight increments versus kind of crazy increments. So we'll go ahead and use this. Take your box, unlock it, and you're gonna make it a thin bar because this is gonna be how you do the little like skip ahead, skip back. And then we'll just go ahead and kind of make it a little bit longer. And this is just sort of, you can play around with it, figure out like where it looks best for you. Oops, not accidentally grab things. Go ahead and select them both. You can also just do an align and you can totally center them vertically. Make sure they're nice and aligned. See if that's where you want it and then just click weld. You can resize from here if you want to change any of the size because you can look, you got two of them. So one goes over here and I might size it down a little. It looks a little bit big. And then I'm gonna duplicate so I don't have to do it again. So that way I can make sure it's exactly the same. And I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna flip it horizontal. And then we have our little design. Now from here, we're gonna wanna center everything, make everything look really nice and neat and clean. I'll show you how to do the next part. So we'll do this line right here. So what we'll do is we're gonna just take a shape and a square again, unlock it, and we're just gonna make it real thin and as long as we want it. And you can make it thin, you can make it thick, whatever you wanna do. But I'm gonna thin mine out a little bit. So what I wanna do is make it about five inches because I wanna have it the same width as the little um, logo or the code. So click on it and just change the width to five. That way you can easily do it. This is going just a little bit slow right now. Um, so we may need to give it a second so that it can catch up. While it's doing that, we'll go back over here and see we need to get a little circle to put it on our line and you can put it wherever you want on your line. Design space is still being a little bit slow. So if you run into this where design space decides it wants to be a little bit slow, what you can absolutely do is wait for it. You can try to save your project. I'm gonna save this as Spotify today and click save and see if it'll save it. Once it's saved, you can just exit out and try reloading. Just depends on if you really wanna mess with it too much or not. Um, just make sure anytime you do make a change that you do um, actually save it again. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna actually take and just make sure those are five inches, five inches, okay. Now we just need a circle. This is super easy to do, you guys, I promise. It's a couple steps, but totally easy, super worth it, and these are so popular. These are so, so cute. Make your circle, and again, you can kind of put your circle wherever you want. Go ahead and select your circle and your line and weld them, and we'll change everything to white. We'll attach everything once we're done, but I just like to kind of mess around and figure out exactly like my layout before I attach. And now we can add our text. So the song is called Today, and we'll use a comma. We're gonna go back into our system fonts up at the top. Just search the word made and you'll find made Tommy. Now I accidentally downloaded the outline, which is kind of annoying. So we'll see if we can just kind of mess with it and fix it so it doesn't look as strange. So what we'll do, cause you can change it to regular, you can change it to bold. So if we do bold for the Brad part, it'll be fine. You, nobody will notice. So we'll do today. And then I wanna add my heart. And we're just sort of setting these. We'll eventually, we'll move them around and make them look really good. Whoops. And then I hit, my screen is touch screen. So sometimes if I accidentally like point to something and then we're just gonna add Brad, oops, and not capitalize his R, Brad, ooh, not braid either. Brad Paisley, that's, there we go. Oh, I can spell. I'm gonna go ahead and bold Brad Paisley. And we'll go ahead and size it down a little bit. Again, we'll resize everything here in just a second. And I actually need to double check the spelling of his name because I feel like I spelled it wrong because that's my life today. I did. I forgot an I. See, always double check your spelling, especially now that they have moved to the um, desktop version. It doesn't do spell check for you. So we'll do it that way. And then I'm going to look at this and just see. It just says the name of the album next to it, and I don't know the name of Brad's album that this is on, Love and War. So what we'll do is we'll go back here, we'll add Love and War, and make sure you capitalize 
this and then you'll just size it down so that it fits and the title should be smaller than your um name so that looks pretty good we just need to move the heart and what we're going to do here i'm just going to line these two up oh, they actually look perfectly lined up i'm going to make sure that these are lined up so we're going to go a line and a line left we are going to make sure that we choose the spotify and the brad and we're going to go ahead and align and align them left real quick just to make sure everything looks even and then we'll move the heart over and then we're just going to kind of move these I want to attach these two things real quick before I do anything else because I want to make sure that this these two items are centered so align and you want to center them horizontally that looks good then I want to take this and this and I just want to align them and center them horizontally. I just want to make sure everything is nice and straight and even. Everything looks really good, straight, even. Go ahead and click attach. It might change gray just because there's more gray. But if it turns white, that's fine because that's what we want to cut. Go ahead and move this out of the way. Now we can add our picture. Now you'll need to know what size of um, item that you're putting this on. And I'm going to put this on an 8x10 acrylic. So that's going to kind of change how we big we make our photo. Um, typically, the photos are going to be squares. If you look, it's just a square of the album. Okay, so I found our wedding photo. So I'm going to click Upload Image and Browse. And I just saved it in my Cricut folder. So all I have to do is go and find it. I should have titled it. And we're just going to find our wedding photo. And you can just choose whatever. It doesn't really matter because we're going to save this as a print and cut. So it's always on the left side, print and cut. Click Save. Again, a little bit slow especially with print and cut images and especially with their higher resolutions, it can be a little bit slow. Now that our photo has shown up, we can resize our photo, we can trim our photo down, all those good things. So, so like I said, they're typically a square and this at its widest point is about five, well it is five inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a shape and I'm gonna make a 4.5 inch square, I think. You kind of want to make this a little bit smaller than your whole design. Now, I may need to make my picture bigger in order to fit that square, and that's okay. I'm going to make my picture bigger. This is my husband's favorite picture from our first dance. So we're going to use this one, and we're just kind of going to guesstimate. It doesn't have to be perfect. I can always redo it later if I don't like it. So we'll just see where it's sliced. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that works. That's really, really good. And you can always size it down after you slice it. Like, I think it does look a little bit too big in that size. So I'm going to size it down a little bit. And we're going to totally resize this whole design based on, you know, the size of what we're putting it on. So like I said, we're putting it on an 8x10 acrylic. So now that we've kind of figured out where we want this, I'm going to go ahead and select all of it. And I want to center it. And I want to center it. Oh, there it is, horizontally. So I just want to make sure it's centered. I'm just doing that so I can make sure everything is sized correctly. So now what we'll do is we'll make our template for our piece that we're putting it on. And this is an eight by 10 sheet. So it is eight inches wide and 10 inches tall. And what we'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and click send to back. And then what I wanna do is make sure I select both of these items and kind of move them around and figure out where I want this to be on our design now I know you guys will probably see this don't worry about this weird cutout it's fine because we're gonna weed out all of this it's just the way Spotify's SVG is set up now again you can move things around do whatever you want make it however you want but this is what your Spotify thing is going to look like that I think the sizing is perfect on this so let's go ahead and get rid of it now what we're gonna do is click make it and I'll show you the different things that you're gonna get so you have your photo and then you have your vinyl part. This is what you're going to cut in vinyl and then this is what you'll print off your computer. I'm going to use StarCraft printable inkjet permanent vinyl. And for this, we're just going to use StarCraft HD. We'll use matte white for this because it's got lots of little tiny pieces and matte white is going to be just excellent. So let's get our printer all set up. I'm going to show you guys how to print this and we will be ready to go. Now that you're ready to print, go ahead and hit continue. We're gonna click send to printer. For this one, I'm gonna leave the bleed on. It basically just gives it a better chance of not having any kind of white around the outside. 
we're going to use system dialog. Click print and it should bring up a screen for you. It takes a second sometimes, but it's going to bring up some settings. So right here, make sure you have the printer that you're using selected. And what you're going to do is go to preferences. Under preferences, you can change all sorts of stuff. And one of the things that's super important to change is your print quality. So you want to change that to high quality and you can change your paper. Mine for some reason doesn't like it. If I change my paper, it only likes it on plain, but I still get great print quality. So make sure you change it to high print quality and then click print. It'll print on your printer. We're going to reuse a piece of the StarCraft printable that I used for a smaller project. I keep those ones because you can totally flip them around and use the other side. Just make sure that you know which side and how your printer prints when you're loading this because if it doesn't print the way you think it's going to, it'll print on a part that you've already used. But I know which way mine prints. Mine prints down in the bottom and then the, what it prints comes out first. So once this loads, it'll pull my paper in and it'll print. You guys always ask what kind of co printer I have. This is a Canon Pixma MG3022. They don't make this exact one anymore, but any of the Canon Pixma MGs work great for these. I really prefer the rear feed tray over a um, side feed tray because it's going to pull your thicker projects in a little bit easier. So this is printing. You'll see it's coming out right down here. And this printer, I mean, it prints pretty quickly. It's pretty good quality. The ink for it's not super expensive. I've been really pleased with it. And here is our print. It came out really good. So what we're going to do is I'm going to let this sit just for a couple minutes just to make sure that everything is good and dry. I haven't had any issues with it running or getting stuck to any parts of the Cricut. But just for my own sake, I'm going to go ahead and let this sit for a couple minutes before we cut. I'm going to add the UV laminant over this. And you don't have to do that. But because of where it's going to sit, I think I'm going to go ahead and add it. Plus, it's going to make it glossy because I have the glossy kind. So what I'm going to do is show you guys how I put mine on. Because I'm not using a full sheet of the printable, I don't want to use a full sheet of the laminate because I can reuse more of this laminate if I make something small again. So I just sort of measure about where my design is. And then I just want to make sure that I have enough to cover the whole photo, which this should be plenty. I always end up using way more of this than like I normally would um, just to make sure I cover everything. Let me grab a squeegee is we're gonna need one of those. And I have this on my mat to do it just because I find it doesn't slide around as much on my table. This tends to slide around. So what we'll do, and I might need to use my pin pen to peel this back a little bit. I'm gonna need a pin pen. I'm gonna grab my pin pen. And all I do is I just take and I just peel this backing off just a little bit. Sometimes it's easier to go from the back. Okay, and I just start a corner. And then all I'm gonna do is just fold this down all along this little edge. And you can do this with, you know, however you want. But this is the way I do it that I find I get the least amount of bubbles. And that way my hands are only touching the tip top where I'm not gonna get any fingerprints on to my design. So all I'm gonna do is put my laminate down and I'm just gonna smooth it out. And then I'm gonna take my squeegee. So I smoothed it out right here at the top. And I'm just gonna take my squeegee and press the whole sheet down until it's covered and then you just want to make sure that you press all that air out if there's any in there and that way now our photo is glossy you can see I don't know how well you guys can tell but it's nice and glossy now so now I'm going to go load it into the machine I'm going to show you guys what cut setting we use for our Starcraft printable vinyl with the laminate now that we've printed it, it's going to ask us to set our material. For this one, we're going to cut it on light cardstock, but we're going to need to cut it twice. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that with your machine. So let's head over to the machine. I'm going to load it and show you guys how to cut twice. Once you've set your material, you're just going to load it into your Cricut machine and cut it out. Now, like I said, we're going to need to cut this twice. And this should cut pretty simply. So what we'll do is we're going to hit the Cricut button as soon as it lights up. And it's going to turn a little light on right around in the center there. And I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. But once that light comes on, what it's doing is reading our cut lines. And I may need to turn off the filming light. It's, it might be adding too much of a glare, but we'll find out. And it's going to read your cut lines, and you'll see that it goes and reads each line. 
and as it's reading them, it's using that light for its sensor. Once it senses where your cut is, it will cut around your cut. And it does scan a few times. Mine hasn't really had too many issues as far as reading the lines, especially even if they're glossy. Some people do. And if you do, just try again. Turn off lights. Try to cover as much light as you can. So now what it's going to do, this one's easy. It's just going to cut around our square. And then once it's done doing that, it'll act like it wants us to unload it. Just like it would if you cut anything else. But instead of unload, hit the little cricket button again. That's going to tell the machine that you want to cut it again. So it's going to go ahead and load it like it did just the first time. And it's going to read our sensors one more time. And then it'll cut it again. It's really important that you don't remove this in between the two cuts. Because if you do, it's going to be slightly off and it won't cut on the same line. This way, it will cut along that same line so that you're sure that you're getting that good quality double cut. So we're going to let this cut out. It should read no problem the second time it read fine the first. Once it does that and it senses its tools, it'll go back. And you can do the same thing with your Cricut Explore machines. You can do a double cut with those as well. Pretty much you can do you know, the double cuts with any of the machines. It's really easy to do. Just don't remove it. So now it's going to cut around our design again. I'm going to let you guys just sit here while it cuts. Then it'll push it back out for us to unload. After you do your double cut, go ahead and unload, and then your sticker will peel like this from here, not from the mat. So don't worry. You want to check it to make sure it's cut, but once you've done that, you can just take your entire StarCraft off. I will say, and I'm going to move my machine out of the way for just a second for you guys. I flip my mat over, and then I take my fingers, and I run it along the StarCraft on the back because you don't want it to bend. Oops. And you'll notice that I used a different sheet. The sheet's different. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I screwed up. I accidentally ripped it when I was trying to peel it off. So I had to reprint. So it's fine. No big deal. It's the same thing, just on a different sheet. But now I'll be able to save the bottom part of the sheet to use again. So it'll be fine. So now we're going to cut out our vinyl. I'm going to show you guys how to change your cut setting over on your machine. And we're going to use StarCraft um, HD in white. Now that you're ready to cut your next product, you're going to click right here where it says material set to, and you can easily change your material setting. We're going to cut this on the vinyl setting, so let's go to the machine and I'll let you guys watch it cut. So what we'll need to do first is remove the protective cover on our acrylic sheet. I like working with acrylic because it doesn't have that super sharp edge like glass does. So it's a little bit safer to use. Glass can easily cut your hand and the acrylic's nice and soft so it's a lot easier. And you can totally put acrylic in a picture frame if you want to. It's all personal preference. But we're going to peel off just one side to start with. And it's super sticky, but it's a way that it protects it when you're in the store. So make sure that when you buy your acrylic, that you really double check and make sure this protective sheet is on both sides. Because if it's not, you'll end up with a scratched up sheet and we don't want that. That's not the look we're going for. So what we have is our printed picture. And then we also have our vinyl, which I know, I'd like I said, it's really hard to see. They are working on getting this done in with the, like a blue backing or something so that you can see it better. Uh, otherwise, love this product. The white is just my only kind of issue is the white. But other than that, it is a good product. I really, really like it. And I know they are working on the white issue. So I just save a lot of my like random shapes of transfer tape from, you know, other projects and stuff because why waste it? It's still good. And I'm just going to trim a little bit off because it's not quite covering the bottom down here, which is fine. And then it's not quite over all the heart. So I'm just going to kind of piece it together. And you can absolutely do that. Like if you have some random pieces of transfer tape and you just want to piece them together, you can do that. Let me grab a colored piece of paper. So because I'm putting white vinyl on a clear sheet with white table, I like to go ahead and put a colored sheet of paper under mine. It helps me see what I'm doing better and it helps 
so that you can line it up really nice. So I burnished my vinyl on to my transfer tape and I always flip mine over and remove the backing from the vinyl versus trying to get the vinyl off of the um like the backing if you did it the other direction it's hard so I like to do it this way so what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to take a look and kind of see about where I want to place that okay I kind of got an idea so all I need to do is place this and you want to make sure that you get it straight as possible uh you could draw lines I am a definite like eyeballer of things I've always been pretty good at lining things up just by eyeballing and making sure they're straight which is shocking because I can't do most things like I can't even cut a straight line with scissors but for some reason I can do this but what you can always do is use like a gridded background so you can either use like a cutting mat or you can draw your own grid with like a dry erase marker on your acrylic on the back lots of options so I'm gonna burnish this down and I want to make sure that I do these little tiny lines because this is the little code that you can scan to get to the song from Spotify and then I'm just gonna make sure that I get all this nice and pressed down and then we're just gonna pick a corner and like I said I added little pieces so it's gonna peel kind of funny in that corner but that's okay and don't worry that this looks cloudy on the back it won't remain cloudy that's just the cover sheet that's on the back of this so now what I'm gonna do is just gently roll my transfer tape back and a lot of people have issues removing transfer tape because they're trying to do it like this where you're pulling straight up you don't want to pull straight up in a way you want to kind of fold it back with a really sharp angle and peel it off like that because you can see how well all of this is sticking and it just makes it a lot easier to do if you do it this way and you'll see these little tiny letters they have no problem staying and it came out really cute. So now all we need to do is add our photo. So adding your photo is more like adding a sticker because this is basically like a sticker now. So you peel it from your sheet and then you just place it. And again, this is all just kind of eyeballing, but you could absolutely measure. And then I'm just gonna use my squeegee just to press it down to make sure I don't have any bubbles in it. I shouldn't, it's a nice thick product so it's really easy to work with. And there is our Spotify playlist. Now I'm going to peel the backing off of this side so that you guys can see it way better. But like I said, there's backing on both sides. So you'll just want to be aware of that when you purchase these. And you'll want to make sure that you peel the backing off of both of the sides. And look at that. We're all done. But there is your Spotify design. Isn't that fun? This is such a cool way, and you guys can do this in so many different ways so with so many different products. I'm going to show you guys how to do a keychain version of this as well because it's so fun, and it's just a cute way to really make something super personal for you or a friend. These are going to make wonderful Christmas gifts, wedding gifts especially. I think a bride and groom would absolutely love to have a gift like this to remember their day or to even commemorate a special moment in their relationship. This is fun for anniversary gifts, even baby gifts. You could totally do like a little picture of the baby with a lullaby. So the possibilities with this are endless. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and it is totally free to subscribe. I hope you guys had so much fun checking out how to make the Spotify glass art wall art, whatever you want to call it. It's so fun. I cannot wait to make several more of these. Have a wonderful day and happy crafting.